Muscles must be capable of fine regulated contractions to allow animals to move their limbs smoothly with coordination. Without fine control, muscles would respond in a spastic manner. Let us see how vertebrates accomplish fine muscle control. The objectives of this tutorial are twofold. The first objective is to describe the structural relationships between motor neurons and the muscle fibers of vertebrate skeletal muscles. The second objective is to explain how motor neurons control the contractions of vertebrate skeletal muscles. Muscles contract in response to electrical stimulation by motor neurons. Muscles are composed of bundles of filamentous contractile cells called fibers. The whole muscle contracts in proportion to the number of fibers that undergo stimulation. Let us observe a maximum shortening of the muscle in response to all the fibers contracting. If a few fibers are stimulated, the muscle contracts part way. If all the fibers are stimulated, the muscle contracts fully. A muscle fiber of vertebrate animals has only a single motor neuron that controls its contraction. However, a single neuron may control more than one fiber within a muscle. A neuron, plus all the muscle fibers that it controls, are referred to as a motor unit. In this model, the muscle is comprised of six fibers and four motor units. The motor units are neuron R and fibers 1 and 3, neuron B and fiber 2, neuron Y and fibers 4 and 6, and neuron P and fiber 5. The point of contact between a neuron and a muscle is termed the neuromuscular junction or motor end plate. A single motor neuron is usually branched and has multiple motor end plates in one or two restricted areas on a vertebrate muscle fiber. But for simplicity, we will show only one end plate for each neuron. The motor end plate of a neuron with a muscle fiber is comparable in structure and function to the synapse between two neurons. The neuron terminus of the motor end plate contains vesicles filled with neurotransmitter chemicals. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter chemical for motor end plates of vertebrate animals. The muscle fiber surface is differentiated in the region of the end plate to possess acetylcholine receptors associated with membrane sodium channels. The membrane also contains the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. Acetylcholinesterase breaks down the vertebrate muscle neurotransmitter chemical acetylcholine. An action potential in a motor neuron causes calcium channels to open and calcium ions to enter the motor end plate. The calcium ions assist in the migration of the neurotransmitter vesicles and their fusion with the end plate membrane. The acetylcholine from the neuron diffuses across the space and activates muscle fiber acetylcholine receptors to open sodium channels in the fiber membrane and allow sodium ions entry into the fiber. Sodium ions diffuse into the muscle fiber and depolarize the fiber membrane in the region of the end plate. This depolarization is called the end plate potential. If sufficiently strong, the end plate potential generates a self-propagating action potential to form and spread over the surface of the muscle fiber. After generating the end plate potential, the acetylcholine is degraded by the acetylcholinesterase enzyme to remove the stimulus to the sodium channels. The sodium channels close and the end plate potential dies out. In the muscles of vertebrate animals, the action potential spreads over the surface of the muscle fiber and results in contraction of the fiber. 
Most vertebrate muscle fibers produce an all-or-nothing contraction in response to the nervous stimulation of the muscle. The number of individual fibers that contract determines the amount of overall muscle contraction. Here we see all fibers being stimulated in a total contraction of the muscle. If only motor neuron R is active, it produces action potentials in fibers 1 and 3. The action potentials spread from the neuromuscular end plate over the surface of fibers 1 and 3, and since only two of the six fibers are stimulated, it produces a contraction equivalent to one-third the muscle's maximum contraction. Input over other neurons also results in muscle contractions proportional to the number of fibers stimulated. Let us observe several combinations of active motor units and the resulting degree of muscle contractions. A single vertebrate muscle fiber is innervated by only one motor neuron. A single motor neuron may innervate many muscle fibers. A motor neuron plus the fibers that it innervates are called a motor unit. Motor neurons have end plate contacts with the fiber in only a single localized region and release acetylcholine as their neurotransmitter chemical. Motor neurons stimulate fiber contraction by a propagated action potential. Fine control of muscle contraction is a function of the proportion of motor units that are active within the muscle.